Hello there! How are you doing? We started the Four Gentlemen series in May with Bamboo, and we're here to finish it with Plum Blossom. We promised in the Chrysanthemum video to do Plum Blossom, and so we're doing it today, right here, and right now. Let's get started with some facts. When you hear the word Plum Blossom or Plum, you may think about these types. But we're not talking about those. We're talking about, um, an Asian variant of plum that they use in the Asian calligraphy painting. Sort of like how in Orchid we had a different variant. In Chinese, it is called Mei, and the fruit is called Meiji, and the Japanese name is Ume, whilst the Korean name is Meiji. The plum tree is renowned for bursting into a riot of blossoms in the dead of winter. Its subtle fragrance spills forth at one of the coldest times of the year making it very difficult to go unnoticed. They bloom beautifully and elegantly during the desolation of winter, and the character of the plum tree thereby serves as a metaphor for inner beauty and humble display under adverse conditions. Before we start drawing the petals, look at the flower. It has five petals and many stamens. Drawing the petals for the plum blossom is actually pretty easy. All you need to do is just, once you put the tip of the brush on the paper, use one or two strokes to make a little circle. Once you're done practicing the individual petals, put them together and make the flower's shape out of it. When you draw these, you can either switch around the two or three, and the four and the five on either side. Now, once you're good at the petals and the flower formation, add the ovary in the middle and add five stamen and add dots representing pollen on top of them. Add more pollens in between the petals. Now, once you're good at that, here's a more advanced one. Add those five and then add a lot more stamen and a lot more pollen to go with it. Here's a more advanced way to draw it. Um, so once you're done drawing the petals, then you draw the ovary and you add the pistil and a whole bunch of stamen. Um, these stamen have pollen on them, and when the bees come and pollinate onto the flower, they get the pollen onto the pistil, and that's what makes the fruit later. Now. Let's do an exercise where we practice drawing the insides of the flower, no petals. And so you draw the stamen and then you draw the pollen from the angle where you're looking at it head on. Just practice drawing that. And sometimes, like this one here, they're at a different angle. This one's drooping a bit down. And sometimes they're at the side and so you can only see like this bit of the, um, of the insides and so you'll draw it like that. Now, let's practice drawing the blooming of the flowers. So we have the bud, and then we have the second stage of blooming, and all you do is just draw a circle, and then make the petals to the side come out a bit more, and then here's the, um, the fully bloomed one, like the one we drew. Now, after all the petals have bloomed, maybe a wind came by and took one of the petals off. Now, you can see the insides just a little bit more. Now another one came by, poor flower, and took off another petal, leaving three. These are some poor flowers that got all their petals taken off. And we're going to draw those right now. Some flowers are shown from a backwards angle, so we're going to draw that. We draw all the petals, but instead of drawing the stuff in the middle, we draw a little sort of blob in the middle called the calyx, which is like the little sheath that holds it together. Now, we're going to practice drawing the blossoms from all different angles. Front, leaning to the left, a 
leaning to the right. Drooping down. And facing upward. Now, we're going to do a different technique as always. Instead of having it be a line drawing, we're filling it in. Um, and when you're drawing the middle for it, it's basically the same as the other one. We're going to draw them from different angles and practice doing that just like we did with the line drawing one. I'm going to do one facing up and practice drawing some buds. Now, just practice drawing them from different angles and different stages of growth. Press down your brush like so and fill it all in to make a blotted out circle. And just practice drawing the petals. Um, because when you're drawing the middle, it's basically the same thing as the other one. Now, let's practice drawing the plum blossom branches. So, just sort of branch off and add spaces because those are going to be for the flowers. Also, if you want the, um, the branches to move up, branch out and have a branch that goes up. If you want the branches to sort of move and look like it's sort of drooping down, branch out and then branch down. And then continue doing that if you want to go down. Add little knobs, sort of like little bits of the branch that make it kind of look rough. Just keep on practicing branching out. It's really fun. Also, here's a little tip. When you're making the branches, um, Press down with the paintbrush and make it a bit more shaky to give it a bit more rough and a ragged feel. Draw the branches and make them go thinner and thinner and thinner. Now we're ready to practice drawing branches with flowers. So as you can see this is why we put the, the spaces in there so we can add different flowers. So we just draw the flowers like how we practiced, and we add them to the branches. You can add some that sort of go off the branch like this, they're connected by a little stem. And this one's just on the other side, so drooping down towards the ground. Practice drawing the flowers in different positions on the branch. Now we're drawing buds and flowers that are starting to bloom. Practice drawing more tree branches and more flowers. This one isn't going upwards or horizontally, it's going a bit down. Now, once you're done branching out, practice drawing the flowers on it. Doesn't it look really nice? Place your flowers in any place you want, as long as it's reasonable and is on the branch. Think about how bigger flowers with more weight go on the meatier part of the branch and smaller bits go on the less meaty part of the branches so it's sort of a bit more in harmony. And the buds go on the edges because the branch is new and the buds are new. Look at that. 
Doesn't it look pretty nice? Now, add little knobbly things to give the branch some extra roughness, like before. Now, my mom is writing in Chinese, Mehua, Plum Blossom. Now, we're using the filled in circles method, but with colors. When you search up a plum blossom painting, you will find many images of red plum blossom paintings in the snow in the winter. Because they bloom in the winter and very snowy, the red and the white, they appear very strong and beautiful. They really pop. We have finally finished the Four Gentlemen painting tutorials. I hope you make a good Four Gentlemen art that you can show to your family and friends. Um, you can find the playlist for all the other Four Gentlemen tutorials in the description if it's your first time seeing this Four Gentlemen tutorial. Now, one more thing. We're going to learn how to write the characters Sa Gunja, Four Gentlemen. We're going to learn how to write each character one by one. Let's start with Sa. This means four, and this is the first step. You make a little diagonal line. Second step, make kind of a square, or almost a square. And the third step, add a little diagonal line inside. Fourth step, add like an L shape. And then the fifth step, close up the square. One, two, three, four, five. This character means four. Now, let's draw Goon. Noble, as a nobleman. Step one, make a right angle. Step two, make a line that goes through the right angle. Step three, make a backwards E, but the line in the middle is longer and sticking out. Step four, make a diagonal line that branches off of the top of the E. Step five, make a little teeny line that branches off of that diagonal line. Step six, make an almost square out of it, like we did for the four. And step seven, close off the square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now let's do ja, man. Step one, make a mini acute angle. Step two, make a line coming off of it with a little check mark thing. Step three, add a line going through it. One, two, three. Ja. And now, we've learned how to write the characters for the four gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, and have fun with art. Please like and subscribe. 
Yay!